Re Baba Re Shaisha Haloka Pravesha Nidra Chari Yota Jeeva Re Baba Re Shaisha Haloka Pravesha Nidra Chari Yota Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Narsim Havamana Shri Madhusudana Prajendra Nandana Shama Narsim Havamana Shri Madhusudana Prajendra Nandana Shama Bhutana Gatana Kaitaba Shatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Bhutana Gatana Kaitaba Shatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Gopi Priya Janna Radhi Karamana Bhavana Sundara Bhara Ravana Thakura Makana Taskara Gopi Jana Vashtrahari Rajera Rakala Gopa Vrindapalo Chita Hari Vamsi Dahari Yogendra Bandana Srinanda Nandana Prajajana Bhaya Hare Navinna Nirada Rupa Manohara Mohana Bhamti Bihare Ya 
Yashodanandana Kamsa Nishodana Nikonjara Tavila Kadamba Kanana Rasa Parayana Brinda Viti Nani Vahase Ananda Vardana Premani Ketana Lashara Yojaka Kana Gopanga Nagana Chita Vinodana Samasta Guna Gana Dahama Yamuna Jeevana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Yamuna Jeevana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashuddha Ras Goa Krishna Yash Rako Vachanamana Mora Namashuddha Ras Goa Krishna Yash Rako Vachanamana Mora Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bharadhari Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bharadhari Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yamunakira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Hare
Premanande Haribo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasitim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Praesva Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter number 25, entitled The Descriptions of the Characteristics of King Puranjana. Text number one. Maitreya Uvacha Iti Sandishya Bhagavan Iti Sandishya Bhagavan Barishadir Abhipujita Barishadir Abhipujita Pashyatam Rajaputranam Pashyatam Rajaputranam Tatraivanta Dadehara Tatraivanta Dadehara Maitreya Uvacha it is Andishya Bhagavan Bar Isha Der Abhipujita Pashyatam Rajaputranam Tatraivantar Dadeharaha Maitreya Uvacha It is Andishya Bhagavan Barishadir Abhipujita Pashyatam Rajaputranam Tatraivantar Dhadehara Tatraivantar Dadehara 
Maitreya Uvacha. The great sage Maitreya continued to speak. It is thus Sandishya giving instruction. Bhagavan, the most powerful Lord. Barishadai by the sons of King Barishat, Abhipujita being worshipped, Pashyatam while they were looking on, Rajaputranam the sons of the king, Tatra, there, Eva, certainly, 
Antadade became visible. Hara Lord Shiva. Translation The great sage Maitreya continued speaking to Vidura. My dear Vidura, in this way Lord Shiva inst instructed the sons of King Barishat. The sons of the king also worshipped Lord Shiva with great devotion and respect. Finally, Lord Shiva became invisible to the princes. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. This chapter contains a great lesson concerning the monarchical kingdom in the days of yore. When King Barishat was considering retiring from the royal duties, he sent his sons to perform austerities in order to become perfect kings for the welfare of the citizens. At the same time, King Barishat was being instructed by the great sage Narad about the material world and the living entity who wants to enjoy it. It is therefore very clear how the kings and princes were trained to take charge of a kingdom. Welfare activities for the benefit of the citizens were aimed at understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The human form of life is especially meant for understanding God our relationship with Him and our activities in His service. Because the kings took charge of the spiritual education of the citizens, both the king and the citizens were happy in Krishna consciousness. In this regard, we should remember that the monarchical hierarchy of Prachini Barishat comes from Maharaj Dhruva, a great devotee of the Lord and the most celebrated disciple of Narada Muni. King Barishat, King Barishat was then too much engaged in fruitive activities due to performing different types of worship or different types of yajna. One can actually be promoted to higher planetary systems or to the heavenly kingdoms by performing various yajnas. But there is no question of liberation or going back home, back to Godhead. When the great sage Narad saw that a descendant of Maharaj Dhruva was being misled by fruitive activities, Narada took compassion upon him and personally came to instruct him about the ultimate benediction of life, Bhakti Yoga. How Narada Muni indirectly introduced the Bhakti Yoga system to King Prachini Barashat is very interestingly described in this 25th chapter. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha Vancha kaupatara vyascha kripa sindhu bhaye vacha Patitanam pavane bhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda 
Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare All right, so in the previous chapter we were hearing Lord Shiva give instructions to the prachetas. Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Kanaya, Jai Sri Sri Nittai Gorangarai. So Lord Shiva had been giving instructions to the prachetas. The prachetas are the sons of this king, Barishat. King, King, and as it's described here, uh, King Barishat wanted to retire from the throne. In the Vedic culture, in old age, people retire. Just like even here in the material world, people retire. In China, people also retire, right? Usually they will retire 55 for the ladies and for the men it will be a bit older, 60 or even 65 sometimes. But some people retire early, right? You can also retire early, you don't need to keep working all that time. So retiring from the material duties means you have time to take up the spiritual duties. Retirement is there in the Vedic culture because people have to prepare for the next life. You retire when half the life is over, right? When you get to fifty, half your life is over. You're ready for the… you have to prepare now for the next life. So in the Vedic culture it is said, pancha sorvam vanam brajet. From the age of fifty you have to go to the forest. You go to the forest to prepare, to do austerity. You do austerity to purify yourself because in the course of your, your early life when you're young you do a lot of nonsense activities. You have a lot of foolish activities and uh, we have to purify ourselves from all these activities. So that's why people would go to the forest. And the king would go and he would go with the queen. The queens also would go. So Bari Muni had fifty wives and they all went with him to the forest. And they all went with their husband. They were all married to Subari Muni. They all went with their husband to the forest. They all did tapasya and they all got liberated together. The husband went back to the spiritual world and the wives followed their husband. So that's the ideal situation. So King Barishat, he wants to retire from his… he wants to retire from the throne. He's tired of being on the throne and ruling, telling people what to do, looking after the kingdom. He got tired of it. So he wants his sons to take the throne. And before his sons take the throne, he wants them to first of all do some tapasya so that they can become good rulers. So he, he asked them to go and do some austerities so that they will become worthy to be kings. Just like in Jaipur in India, there's one town in India called Jaipur. 
and there was a king. They had in the past, nowadays they don't have, but in the past there was a king, the ruler, the king of Jaipur. But before the, before the prince would become the king, he was given a sword and he was called, go into the jungle and kill a tiger. And before he got to become the king, before he could take the throne, he had to go to the forest with a, a sword and he had to kill a tiger. And you, if you go to the palace in Jaipur, you can see the heads of the tigers which were killed by the different princes. Before they became king, they had to prove their courage, that they were brave and that they were powerful. The Kshatriya, the kings, they had to be like that. They had to be very strong, very powerful. And they had to be also very pure. Not only strong, but they had to be very pure also. So they did tapasya, they did austerities. And then they became the king. So it's mentioned here, the kings, the princes, the young princes, they were trained to become kings, to take charge of the kingdom. The kings are very important. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes in the tenth, in the tenth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he says, among men I am the monarch. The monarch means the king. So the king is a representative of God on the earth. If somebody is a king or a monarch, he is representing the Supreme Lord. And, and you'll see in countries where they have a monarch, practically people worship the monarch. In, in some countries you will see how people worship the monarch, that they will give, they will, they will sing a song that, praising them every day. Because the king is ruling the country and he has the duty to teach the people by his example. He has to teach everyone what is the proper standard of behavior. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes how he gave the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita to the saintly kings, to the Rajarshis, Raja Rishis. Raja meaning king and Rishi mean sages. So saintly kings, not just any ordinary mundane king who is just enjoying sense gratification, he has a lot of money and he has a lot of wives and a lot of women around him for his sense gratification and he has many cars to ride in and he will go and spend a lot of money for enjoyment. So a saintly king is somebody who is taking care of the citizens. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes, Imam vivishvate yogam proktavam aham avyayam vivishvan manave prahur manur ikshvaka ve bravet. Lord Krishna describes, he said, I instructed this knowledge to the, to the sun god vivishvan. And then Vivishwan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind. And Manu instructed to Ikshvaku. And in this way the knowledge came to the saintly kings. Right? From the sun god it came to the, the son of the sun god. It, then it came to Manu. Then it came to Ikshvaku. So Ikshvaku was a ruler, 
he was one of the and Mano, he is the father of mankind. And then in the next verse, Lord Krishna describes Evam Parampara Praptam Emam Rajasayo Vidu Sakalenihā Mahata Yoga Nashta Parantapa. In this way the knowledge came to the saintly kings. And the saintly kings, they would give the people that knowledge because they're the kings. So the people would hear from them and they would do whatever the king said. So the system of having a monarch, of having a king was very good. If the king was good, then the whole country benefited. So in the past, we had great kings. There were kings like Maharaj uh, Dasarath, who was the father of Lord Ramachandra. And Lord Ramachandra, he, he was, a, as a young prince, he was trained. He was trained. He also had gone into the forest. He lived in the forest for 12 years. And he came back and he became the king. And he ruled the kingdom for a long time. And all the people were very happy. And they talk about the, the rule of Lord Rama. They call it Rama Raja. The, the, the government of Lord Ram was the best government you could get anywhere. It was the best type of government to have. And even today people dream about having a government like in the times of Lord Rama. During the time of Lord Ram, if anybody had any complaint, they could come and tell Lord Rama about it. But nobody ever came. Everybody was happy. Everybody was satisfied. Nobody had any complaints. So in this way, the ki uh, kings like Lord Rama, they could rule very nicely. And they gave people material benefit and also spiritual benefit. The kings were not just only concerned in taking taxes from the people. Of course, today they take tax from the people, they say, for material benefit. To do things like build roads and to make... Uh, Hospi more hospitals and better schools and universities. Just like here in Malaysia. In the past there was only five universities. Now they have 22 universities. So they want more young people to go on for higher education. And we see also in China the same thing. I saw in China that initially there were not many universities, but in the recent times more and more universities have opened up in different places. But that is all for material education. There is no attention paid to spiritual education. When you have the ideal king, then you will get also spiritual education. To just take care of material education, to give material education, that is not solving the real problem of life. The real problem of life is that we have a material body which is going to get old, it's going to suffer disease and people are going to die. And we saw when COVID came, when the COVID broke out, then so many people had the disease, people were suffering 
and people were dying also and nobody could save them. And they say vaccine, they were saying vaccine, va vaccine didn't stop people dying. So many more people died. Even people who took the vaccine, they died even the same day. So these vaccines were not the solution to the problem. We have to understand the nature of the problem. The problem is we are in the material world. You cannot fight against the miseries of the material world. There's going to be old age, there's going to be disease and there's going to be death. But we have to understand what is the real solution. The real solution is to get out from this world, to go out of the material world, not to take birth again in this material place, but to go to the spiritual world, to enter into the spiritual abode where life is eternal, blissful and full of knowledge. To remain here in the material world means constant birth and death. Taking birth, Bhagavad Gita says, Jatasya hi dhruvam ritu, dhruvam janma mritasya cha. For one who has taken birth, Death is certain. So we have to understand the material world, the problem is there. So we're, we're told how we, wa we want to have wonderful rulers, the people who are leading the country, they should be rich in spiritual knowledge as well as in material assets. They should be wealthy people because they should be caring for the others. And when people have needs, they can come and they will be satisfied. Just like when there were good kings, the kings would give charity to all the people. They would not let any of the people go hungry. One time in France, France used to have a king and queen and they were rich and they were enjoying but the people of France were very poor. So one time they, they asked the queen, they asked the queen of France, they, well, they, well, first of all, they told the Queen of France, they told her, you know, the people have no bread to eat. They're so poor, they don't even have any bread to eat. So she said, they don't have any bread? Then why don't they eat cake? So, this was her thinking like that. You see, she was not concerned really for the people. So what happened was there was a revolution in France, very famous. Prabhupada came to France and when Prabhupada was in France he said, your country is famous for revolution. Yes, they had a revolution in France and they took all the members of the royal family and they cut their heads off. In France they have a thing called the guillotine. It's a big tall structure with a big razor blade on the top, a very sharp knife edge and they drop that, they put the person's head down and they have this, razor, this knife comes right down and cuts off their head. That's the death penalty in France. They don't hang people, they just cut off their heads. 
and they have this device to cut off their head. So they brought all these queens and kings from the palace and they cut all their heads off. And all the people were cheering. Every time a head was cut off they would cheer. So this was the French Revolution because the king and they didn't take care of the needs of the people. So the people revolted. And uh, other, they, when the kings don't care, then that's what happens, that it fails. So the system which is given, this system of dividing society into different varnas, Brahman, Kshatri, Vaishya, Sudra, this is given by Krishna Himself. It's a perfect system. Uh, Chaturvanam Maya Shristam. Chaturvanam Maya Shristam Guna Karma Vibhagasha. Lord Krishna said, I am the creator of this system and I have created it according to Guna and Karma. But the people did not follow. Instead of following by quality and work, Guna means quality and karma means work, activity. They took the birth as being important. And they thought birth is the main thing. <coughs> Can you turn this fan off? <coughs> they thought birth is more important than anything. And that's why the Varnashram system failed. The, the Brahmanas, the Brahman, people are not Brahmanas by birth but they have to have the qualities. And similarly also to be kings. To be kings it's not enough just to be the son of a king. You have to have the qualities of the king. You have to be trained. And so it's told here how the Prachetas were trained. They were sent to do austerities and then they would come back and become the kings. And it's mentioned here also about Maharaj Dhruva. That these kings, the Prachetas, they all came from Maharaj Dhruva, they were the descendants from the family of Dhruva. So they were born in a good family but still they have to be trained, they have to be properly qualified before they become kings. It's not enough to say that, oh my father is the king so I should be the king. And that's why you see in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, when Maharaj Parikshit was born, Maharaj Parikshit was the son of Abhimanu. Now Abhimanu was killed in the Kurukshetra war, so Parikshit was to become the king. After Yudhisthira, Parikshit was to become the king. But before he became the king, when the child was born, all the astrologers were asked, please study what will be the nature of this child. And the astrologers, they could understand if the child is qualified or not. And they gave different predictions about the nature of that child. So, There's an advantage if you're born in a Brahmana family. There's an advantage if your father is a king. But it's not the only qualification. Birth is not the only qualification. Just like your father and mother may be a doctor, it does not mean you're also a doctor. 
you still have to go to medical college, you have to study, you have to graduate, you have to be trained. It's not enough to just say, my mother, my father, they are doctors, I am also doctor. Or your father may be high court judge. It does not mean you are high court judge. You have to be trained, you have to be qualified. So here also, the sons of the king, Barishat, they were to be trained and they were sent to do austerities before they became king. So they were supposed to... Uh, sometimes it happens that the kings, that they engage in a lot of fruitive activities, what we call karma kanda activities, yagnas. Often people will do the yagna and they have a material purpose behind it. Their purpose is not spiritual but it's material. For example, they do a, maybe a husband and wife, they have no child. They do a putra yagna. They want to get a child and they perform a yagya to, so that they can get a child. And they do yagyas, sometimes you, you have some challenging situation, you're facing some difficulties. The yagna, people may perform the yagya to get rid of the difficulties, to overcome the obstacles in their material life. So this king, Barishat, he had been engaged, he'd done a lot of yagyas and his yagyas were sacrificing animals, killing animals. Just like before Lord Buddha came, the brahmanas were killing many animals. They were doing sacrifice and they were telling people, oh, Oh, you have a problem, oh, you have to do a yagya. And what yagya you have to do? Oh, we have to sacrifice some goat or some animal like that. They, will, they would do a yagya. And this way the brahmana will make money because the brahmana has to do the yagya. So the people have to pay the brahmana. So the brahmanas, they will encourage, do the yagya because they make money. When you do the yagya, they will make the money. Just like you go to doctor, the lady's going to deliver a child. She's going to give birth to the child. The doctor will say, oh, you better do cesarean operation. Yeah, you need operation, it will be dangerous. You better do cesarean. Don't try to give birth naturally, better you do. Why? The doctor will make more money. Really? They often do like that. The doctors, brahmanas, they're thinking how to make the money. So that is the problem. That is not spiritual. So Narada Muni, he is not that kind of person. And he's going to teach Maharaj Prachini Barishat about bhakti yoga. But he's not going to tell him directly, he's going to use an indirect approach. Narada Muni is a very expert preacher and he uses many different strategies in preaching Krishna consciousness. We can learn a lot from his preaching. Okay, we will stop here. Are there any questions? Yes? What? Descendant from the Lord, like industrial, 
the drama is from what drama is from the western. The kings are from the descendants of the Manu. The nowadays kings. The nowadays the kings nowadays. Are descendants from the Are they? Are descendants from the who? The Lord Brahma or Manu and all that, right? Are you asking me or are you telling me? <laughs> I've never heard it before. She's asking, are the are the, the present day kings, are they all descended from Manu? We're all descended from Manu. Manu is the father of mankind, so we're all descended from Manu. But there are two main lines of kings. The, the Kshatriya kings, and originally there were two lines. One was from the sun god and the other is from the moon god. Now Lord Ramachandra, his line comes from the sun god, but Lord Krishna he appeared in the dynasty coming from the moon. There are these these are the two main lines of Kshatriya kings. Kshatriyas. Yes. I didn't hear anything. Well, uh, Srila Prabhupada, yeah, you see in the Vedic culture people would go to the forest, but Prabhupada says, of course in this age you cannot go to the forest. But he said you should take shelter of the Krishna consciousness movement. So we do have some some opportunities for people, just like Sandini has a center. Some older people have gone there and they find they, they're able to stay there and do service. Some of the devotees from different places, they've gone there and they've made their took shelter there in Sandini Maharaj's uh, ashram place. There are other, of course you can also, there's not now also devotee went to that uh, uh, Shang Shou Tun, uh, Bama, Bama Zai Guanxi. So she's got a place there, she's got a building there, the people can go there and stay there. So that you want to get, you put yourself in a situation where you can get association with people who are practicing seriously spiritual life.
people have to be serious, you know, and as you get older, then you, you're, it's expected you become more serious about practicing spiritual life. Because we know we're going to leave the body soon. We have to prepare for the next life. Quite serious. Well, you teach him yourself, homeschooling. Not very good. Huh? The government don't allow. Well, we have uh, Nimaini Thai Maharaji. She brought her son here to Malaysia to go to school. If, but if you if you put them in the regular school, then definitely it will be very difficult. <clears throat> best, is, but best is homeschooling. You teach them yourself. Keep them at home. But you have to teach him. And you can have tutors also come. It's very difficult, we agree, it's a very difficult thing. Very difficult to bring up your children to be devotees. The, even the devotees here in Malaysia, they have a very difficult time to bring up their children to be devotees. Like to go where? 
<laughs> yeah, but he has to learn to read and write. He has to be able to read and write, that's important. Janaka, neither one to. Huh? What is this now? Hindu, India is a democracy now. It's all political parties. Huh? Uh, well, there are some like in the in the Middle East. You've got the Arab people, you know, the Arab rulers. And they take care of all their people. They take care of all the citizens who are born there, who are the actual citizens of that country. They take care of them materially. And of course they're all Muslim, they practice their Islamic religion. Shema Defo? Yeah, Chongdong, Alabong, Saudi. You don't get this, you don't get that kind. It, recently in India they, they, they give a lot of money to the different people there in India because they want India to become digital. The, you know, everything is digitalized there. And so they want everyone to have a bank account. So what happened, the government gave money to everyone, to, especially the people from the lower income level, they gave them money so that they could all have a bank account and they want them to, you know, have a mobile phone and to pay everything with their mobile phone. They're trying to bring up the lower class in India, try to bring up the lower class, so give them money and and this way then they can uh, have everybody, all the money will be, it will be known, you know, it won't, because in India they have a lot of corruption, a lot of black, what they call black money, which is, they don't declare it to the government. And if they declared everything to the government, then they'd have to pay a lot of taxes. So the people don't like to pay taxes, so they hide their money. So they have a lot of money which is like that. And th this creates a lot of problems in the country. There's so much corruption, there's so much Ill illegal, 
or unde unde undeclared money. So the government are trying to solve that by digit introducing the digitalization. Just like in China it's all digitalized also now. Everybody, you pay everything with your mobile phone, right? Zaijongo, Shenzai Mea Ren Yo Sinjing, Doshi Yong Shoji. The, dev the devotees are selling books in India. You know, people say, oh, I don't have any money with me. They say, it's okay, you can pay on your phone. And they get the phone out and they transfer. Yeah. And they, they sell their books like that. It's all done digitally. The books, book distribution. So, the idea is, the government gave money to people, they gave handouts to many thousands and thousands of people, lakhs of people. They gave them all money so that they could open their bank account and then the government can digitalize everything. And that way the, the government can take away a lot of the corruption. And the government also introduced a policy there in India that the big companies, that they have to donate a portion of their profits for the service of the, the country to uplift the poor people, to do welfare programs. But it's all material, it's all material things, it's nothing spiritual, you know. The, the government don't give any money for temples, they don't, you know, really, they can't do that. Because if they give to the temples then they'd have to give to the Christians, they'd have to give to the Muslims, they'd have to give to everybody. So they, they just give for the schools, they give for schools, they give for hospitals, they give for the children, orphanages and like that. But they don't give for spiritual purposes. They don't. If you're going to teach, if you're going to teach in the schools in India, you have to teach in a manner without talking about Krishna. You could, you have to talk about morality, like in China, you talk about morality. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, all these, these talk about moral, moral principles and being a good person and all this. So they, 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 the government are encouraging that kind of stuff in India today. But they, they cannot encourage any one particular faith. All right. Okay, so we'll stop there. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki Gaur Bhakti Vrinda.